Okay, I just wanted to go over some pharmacology practice questions, but before I can do that, I kind of kind of got to explain about Kindle and uh, how to do uh, Kindle. So the misconception is that you have to have a Kindle device to watch a Kindle book or to read a Kindle book. So I'm just going to kind of go through that now and kill two birds with one stone by going over some practice questions at the same time. Uh, that I can kind of introduce how to manipulate Kindle. So this is a page on Kindle and what it looks like on the screen and I'm not using a Kindle device I'm just using a desktop actually and this is what I want to talk about with the practice multiple choice questions I'm adding questions to the book over the summer um, so there's gonna be 15 on each topic so about 120 questions and we'll just go over some GI questions um, but uh, the first thing I kind of want to go over is that when you're trying to retain information from a question and you just answer the question, there's not a lot of learning going on there. So I'll, I'll go over this question and kind of answer it. Uh, a patient asked which medicine they should purchase. The prescriber told them to get a stool softener over the counter, but didn't tell them the name of the medicine. And that actually happens all the time. They're like, you know, you should get this, but don't actually say what it looks like or what it is. Uh, and which of the following is the medicine they should get? So the answer is they should get docusate sodium. That's the stool softener. And a lot of students will stop there and just go to the next one. Like, okay, I answered it. I'm going to go to the next, which is what you can do during a test because you're trying to be rapid in the first run through uh, to make sure that you get through all the questions. But when you're studying for an exam, that's not how you want to do it. What you want to do is you want to say, okay, docusate sodium, that's right. The answer is A. But then you want to say, okay, well, why is B wrong? Well, psyllium is... Uh, form of laxative so it might fall in the same class as docusate sodium but this is really an, an uh, bulk forming agent and then you've got polyethylene glycol also has a laxative effect but that's an osmotic and senna also a laxative but it's a stimulant so while all of these have a laxative effect of some kind or another some mush some push uh, what you're really saying is okay well why did the other three or why are the other three wrong and it's a lot easier to put on your note card hey this is not only why this is right but this is why these three are wrong and there's a lot more learning there so when uh, people tell me hey you know I've gone through tons of practice tests and I'm just not retaining it well you're going so fast and your your goal while you're doing it was maybe to make sure you get as many questions as you can but if you want to retain and learn as much as you can, then you want to give the answers to why the other three are wrong. So let's go over uh, three different questions that uh, apply to this test. Number one, a student asks how stomach ulcers come about. While there are many factors that can cause ulceration, one contributor of peptic ulcer disease might include. And so we look through each of these and we see NSAIDs, mucus, bicarbonate, and prostaglandins. So what should be pretty clear is that when you have factors, you're going to have something that either hurts the stomach or things that protect it. And if you want to think of this as one square and three circles, which doesn't belong, the NSAIDs is the one that would contribute to an ulcer, whereas the mucus, bicarbonate, and prostaglandins, these are all protective. So even if you didn't read the question, you can say, okay, well, these three are related and this one is not. Uh, so this one would be the answer A, uh, NSAIDs. Uh, let's do a second one. So while the stomach is a hostile place for bacteria, there are protections built into the stomach to defend against peptic ulcer disease. Well, a defender or protector against peptic ulcer disease might include, and so now we have the opposite question. Now we have, okay, well, what are the things that are going to cause an ulcer and what's the thing that's going to protect it so bicarbonate a would protect it but NSAIDs H pylori and pepsin these all would hurt the stomach so again we've got a kind of that square and three circles where you're like okay well why is each of these wrong well NSAIDs H pylori and pepsin these are all aggressive factors or damaging factors whatever you want to call it and I would put that on whatever way you're studying, maybe a little note card, uh, paper, because this is what you really want to do is 
engage with the question, get the answer right, of course, but also look at the ones that are wrong and say, this is why they're wrong. That's where the real learning happens. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, sometimes the easiest way to calm an upset stomach is to go to the over-the-counter pharmacy aisle. A patient complains of constipation, stomach indigestion. You suggest which antacid. And so we look at these and say, okay, well, magnesium hydroxide, this is an antacid. Um, they're complaining of constipation, so we wouldn't want to give them calcium carbonate, but that's not a choice. Uh, but we would want to give them maybe something with a laxative effect, and that would be magnesium hydroxide. It also has a laxative effect. Why are the other three wrong though? Well, famotidine is an H2 blocker. Uh, it would help with an unset stomach that had a lot to do with acid, but it would be something you take before a meal. So it wouldn't calm an upset stomach that it already happened with something that someone's eaten. Esomeprazole is the generic name of Nexium, and that would also uh, be something that would be an issue uh, with an upset stomach and reduce acid. But again, um, that's not an antacid. Okay, that's a proton pump inhibitor. And then polyethylene glycol is actually a laxative, which might help with the constipation, but would do nothing for the stomach indigestion, if not make it a little bit worse. So our answer is magnesium hydroxide, but where the learning happens is if you say magnesium hydroxide is an antacid, which is over the counter, which would have a little bit of a laxative effect to help with the constipation, but famotidine is an H2 blocker, Esomeprazole is a proton pump inhibitor, and polyethylene glycol is an osmotic laxative, and that's why those are wrong. So taking that little bit of extra time to say why they're wrong versus why one's right is really going to help you a lot uh, as you go through those questions. So there are, again, 25 of those type of questions, uh, tiny little um, case studies, something that's happening to a patient. Uh, what can we do? What's the right thing? What's the wrong thing? Uh, but if you look at it that way as you're studying through, and I know that in the interim it's, it seems like it's going to take a lot more time, but in terms of what you actually remember and what you actually understand, it's infinitely better uh, than just trying to burn through as many as you can.